Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's video is the five rules of bicep training. Helpful tips to get you the biggest biceps that you can get. They're not hard rules, but give them a try and they'll probably work. Rule number one is to try the free motion bicep curl and or the incline dumbbell curl. And the way you do the free motion curl is you set up the free motion handles, you walk way in front of the machine, so at the bottom, your biceps are pre-stretched out like crazy, and then you curl from a very stretched position. And of course, this is the same position you'll end up taking on an incline dumbbell curl, where you put the incline 45 degrees or 60 degrees or so, and at the bottom, you're going to have an unreal stretch. Your biceps attach across your shoulder as well as your elbow, so if you push this upper arm back before you start, it really stretches them out. There's been a good deal of research and plenty of theory showing that you get more muscle growth when you stretch the muscle under load versus if you just load it without a stretch. These two exercises, and there's a few more you could try that stretch the muscle, are really awesome. Up until I tried them, I didn't think there was a great bicep exercise for me. Just some good ones and mostly meh and okay ones that I didn't love too much. Now I have go-to exercises that are bread and butter, gonna mess me up every single time. Rule number two, on the front of messing up. A lot of people can even do good technique with curls, but way too many people drop the bar really quick because the eccentric slow control on the way down is two things. Painful, and reduces how many reps you can do or how much weight you can do. So that girl who's always looking at you in the gym who you think is maybe single, maybe interested, but maybe satanic and gonna kill you, she is just not looking as hard anymore because you used to use the 25s, but now you're down to 10s and change because you're trying to control the eccentric. But picking up satanist chicks at the gym aside, it's just better for muscle growth. So when you have the incline dumbbells, you bring up the dumbbells, don't just thrash them back down. Bring it up is half the battle, maybe not even half, because that's the easy part. The hard part is to take two or three seconds, slowly control all the way down at the bottom, and then bring, bring back up again. That is critical. Rule number three, especially on dumbbells, you want your pinkies to end up towards the sky. As you curl, I don't mean you have to rotate, but as you curl, think pinkies up. The biceps have two functions. One, is forearm flexion, and one is supination, moving your wrist like this. And pinkies up is the supinator cue. It can help you really get in tune with hitting your biceps versus all the other forearm flexors that can do the job instead. Rule number four is to experiment with different rep ranges. There is a huge variation in responses. Some people would do sets of eight in the bicep curls, and they're like, I don't know, that just hurts my elbows, I don't feel anything. Some people will do sets of eight and say, there is a tension in my biceps I cannot explain. And if I do higher rep sets of 15 and 20, I just feel tired. How you know which rep range is the right for you, and there could be lots of right answers, is if in the heavy rep range, you feel a ton of tension in the bicep itself. In the lighter rep ranges, you get crazy, crazy burns. If you have a psychotic burn right in the middle of your bicep, you're not doing anything wrong. Whereas if you're doing high reps and it just feels tired, maybe high reps are not for you in that particular exercise. All of the exercises that you should be doing, or rather the loading ranges, should be giving you a gnarly pump. People who respond really well to sets of eight in the bicep do a few sets of eight and they're like, holy crap, my arm's busting through, people who love high reps get a huge pump off of that, and so on and so forth. So pay attention to your body signs, stimulus, and fatigue. So if a certain rep range just makes you feel tired and hurts your elbows, where another one makes you feel great and hurts seemingly nothing, make sure you go towards the one with a higher stimulus to fatigue ratio rather than low. Don't just do plug and play and do everything sets of 10. Try different rep ranges with different exercise, see what goes best. Another thing to look for is depending on the rep range and how you position and which exercises you're doing, you might get a lot of tension and burn in the forearms versus your bicep. If you're trying to look like Popeye, hey, fuck it, forearms work just great. But if you really want bigger biceps, then what you wanna do is pick the rep ranges and the exercises and the techniques that make the max amount of tension and burn hit your biceps rather than your forearms. That's really huge. Lastly, rule number five, if you really are serious about growth and really kind of nothing has worked, Try mile rep matching. That means, let's say you get some dumbbell curls and you do a set of 20, real close to failure, I'm 
I don't want to go through the desk here, but full range of motion, damn it, don't just copy me here doing these fake curls. A set of 20 close to failure, you put the dumbbells down. Then for the next several sets, let's say you have three total planned, that's two more sets. What you're gonna do is hit 20 reps, but you're gonna be too tired to hit it all in one set each time. So when you get to about 15 and nearly crap out, put the dumbbells down for a few seconds, rest a little bit, shake out the burn, do another five. So that's 20 of the first one in a straight set. The second is 20 in a two mile rep set, one mile rep break. In the third one, you might get to 12 and then do you know another four and then do another four after a little bit of a rest and then get to 20. That first set, you match and match and match with as many mile rep sets as it takes to match up to that first one. It piles the volume on like crazy. And it allows you to take three sets of a bicep workout and get like, gee, three, four, five, six, seven approaches to failure, maybe eight. Wow. We know that approaching failure in the last few reps before it have a mildly higher effect on muscle growth than just the reps that are easy at the beginning of the set. If you do the Maya rep matching for biceps, which are often really fatigue resistant, they need a ton of stimulus to grow. If you try to do that with straight sets, like eight straight sets, eight sets of 10 on biceps, I'd rather shoot myself in front of everyone at the gym. Color me bored and hurt. But my rep match sets, just take a couple seconds break between and go, go, go. Holy crap, that can be hugely effective. Don't just do five of these and have your arms fall off. Try two of them at first, and if it feels great, maybe add three, four, five, et cetera, however many you need to get a great stimulus. You're going to recover from next time. Come back with bigger arms, and as soon as you have big arms, you just say one thing. Satanist chicks, your king has arrived.